After the release of Jurassic World in 2015, Universal Creative, the team behind other extremely detailed lands and dark rides within the Universal Parks, looked to add an immersive land to Universal's Islands of Adventure. However, this new area that took over the park's long-lost Triceratops encounter also marked the opening of Jurassic World Velocicoaster, a high-intensity multi-launch roller coaster to draw in guests to join the hunt that's become the pinnacle of the park's thrilling offerings. Welcome to Amusement Labs, where today I'll show you the history, engineering, and technology behind Jurassic World Velocicoaster. This video is sponsored by generous patrons, especially Levi Valentine, Felix Monteza, and Brandon Wiggins at patreon.com slash amusement labs. Located at Universal's Islands of Adventure, Velocicoaster is a high thrill launch coaster in the Jurassic World section outside of the Discovery Center of Jurassic Park. The ride sits in a bit of a Jurassic Park and Jurassic World hybrid section where the ride itself takes place before the events of the 2015 movie. This 70 second long ride rockets riders through 4,700 feet or just over 1.4 kilometers of reinforced steel track. The ride is manufactured by Intamin, a Swiss coaster manufacturer known for more amusement park related coasters and also known for being rife with technical issues and high maintenance requirements. Intamin is also responsible for other rides around the resort like Haggard's Magical Creatures super long name motorbike adventure that opened just a few years ago to 10 hour lines and a list of technical issues. However, Velocic Coaster seems to be more reliable. Taking place in this hybrid land, Velocicoaster beckons riders down to his entrance on the left side of the Discovery Center through an open-air entrance plaza in an industrial and technology-themed building. The queue's main atrium is centered around a statue of the fictional park's landmark attractions, Blue, Delta, Echo, and Charlie. The queue then enters into an outdoor overflow queue and then back inside to a few pre-show rooms where video presentations of the ride's backstory and rider information are relayed. The first room riders enter is darkened and features windows out into the second launch of the ride. When a train rushes by, a sensor triggers one of six animations. The windows then make it appear that the velociraptors have escaped and are right behind chasing the train. While the creative team claims this is a new effect, we believe from the translucency and brightness of the animation that the windows are transparent OLED screens. By utilizing microscopic LEDs on glass, when the LEDs light up, the animation appears to materialize out of thin air. This also explains why the wall opposite the windows is black to create contrast and to prevent the animation from appearing transparent. While the effect is not technologically unique, it is technically still new to theme parks. Further into the queue, riders enter the barn of the raptor paddock. Inside the barn, guests are able to get extremely close to seemingly living, breathing animatronic velociraptors in holding muzzles. While the raptors are not full-bodied, this scene cleverly uses the muzzled scenario to the fullest extent. Each raptor, Delta and Echo, use electric motors to make small precise movements in the eyes, nostrils, lips, and other underskin features in order to sell the realism. Each of the two raptors also has the ability to realistically breathe with pneumatic air coming from their noses and also has the ability to shake the restraints to spook riders in line. Animax, the same company known for Jurassic World themed traveling shows, is the company responsible for these very convincing figures. Given the layout of the ride, riders are then instructed to place their loose articles in pass-through lockers. The entire station is supposed to be a replica of the Raptor Paddock observation deck that appears in the first Jurassic World film. In the station, riders are split into 12 rows of two riders with clear acrylic and steel air gates. The entire station only holds one train at a time with the train bay located off a switch track just before entering the station. In between waiting riders are small LCD information screens to instruct riders how to load properly and quickly. Once the gates swing open, riders board and pull down their lap bar. Despite the appearance, lap bars are actually far more secure given the part of the body they hold down. 
Each seat features eight LEDs for show that pulse through in patterns while on the ride and mostly at night. To power the lights, the train uses supercapacitors that quickly charge at the station and power the monitoring system and lights on the train during your ride. Each train features 84 wheels, which keep the ride nice and smooth. 28 wheels are called road or load wheels. 28 more slightly smaller wheels hug the sides of the rails called guide wheels, which steer the train. And finally, 28 wheels called upstops support the train through zero and negative g-forces. There are six wheels, two of each kind, in a wheel assembly called a bogey, with seven pairs of bogies total for a six-car train. The train uses a lead and trailer setup with all but the front pair of assemblies rotating in three directions. Each bogey connects to what we will call the T-frame, where the bogies sit opposite the other with the main spine perpendicular in the middle. On the bottom of the main central spine of the train, two lines of permanent magnets with alternating poles are attached. These are used as part of the ride's main propulsion system. To launch riders, Velocicoaster does not use drive tires or a cable pull launch or a lift system. Like Hagrid's, the ride uses white fins called linear synchronous motor stators designed by InDriveTech short for Innovative Drive Technologies. For this explanation, I've created this model of a linear synchronous motor stator inspired by the design used on Velocicoaster and other rides. If you'd like, you can find the link to this model below and print it out. These linear motors use enameled wire in tight coils to run a very high current in a short period of time. This trio of high current carrying windings are connected in a star pattern to inverters located below the track. When each coil is given its own alternating current, they create a three-phase magnetic field pattern that passes from coil to coil through the wire and around an iron core inside the stator. These magnetic fields impart attractive and repulsive forces to permanent magnets that are fixed to the spine of the train, which gets it moving. In between the LSM stators, Hall effect sensors detect the permanent magnets of the train, providing motion data. Using that data, the launch system sets the speed of the three-phase current for each stator so the magnetic field remains synced with the train as it accelerates. Because these LSMs pass very high currents through their coils, they can get very hot, and the Florida weather certainly doesn't help. To combat this, InDriveTech has created a liquid-cooled layer that is then sandwiched between the halves of the coils. Heat transfer occurs via thermal conduction from the coils and the iron core to the cooling layer using a milled aluminum layer that has high thermal conductivity and diffusivity, plus it's cheap. In order to create this much power to launch the train through two separate launches, the system is using a substation to not pull down the park's power. Instead, generators are connected to supercapacitors which charge, hold, and dump power. When directed, the LSMs can each have access to kilowatts of power without causing a park-wide blackout. Each launch uses around 50 of these LSMs to launch the ride through its high thrill layout. Aside from being a contactless launch system, the LSMs can also act as contactless brakes by acting against the movement of the train. However, in many cases like Velocicoaster, copper alloy fins located at the end of the launches are lowered and then raised once the train passes. These fins create eddy currents that work against the train's motion and require no power. Unlike other parks, Universal assisted on control of the ride's design and layout rather than letting Intimate control what was built. As a result, Velocicoaster's unique and thrilling combo of modern elements is the brainchild of Keith McVean, who is solely responsible for what Velocicoaster is layout-wise. Once dispatched, the train rolls downhill into the first and only show scene on the ride and into the first standing launch. Here, the LSM stop the train and use drive tires to move it slightly back. When ready, the ride's PLC can begin using the Hall Effect sensors to activate the LSM stators that are occupied by the train. Riders are then launched from 0 to 50 miles per hour in just 2 seconds, and then up into the first of four inversions, starting with an inclined Immelman, down into rockwork, back up into a dive loop, pulling out into a high bank turn, an airtime hill, an elevated turn to the rocks again, 
down a declined S-curve, through another high bank to turn, past a hungry raptor, up over an outer banked airtime hill, and then down into launch 2, a rolling launch accelerating from 40 to 70, and then immediately rocketing up into a 150 foot top hat, slowing at the osprey nest. Then down 140 feet, the train then enters into a 100 foot hanging stall over the pathway and onto the lagoon with a wave turn, an outer banked hill, a high bank turn, and then a quick speed hill and into the Mosasaurus roll over the water. And then into a pair of twisting airtime hills and into the copper fin brakes. And that all happens in just over a minute. The train then returns to the station and riders can unload, catch their breath, and then hop back in line to do it all over again. Velocicoaster has multiple block sections or areas of the ride where only one train can be present and can stop a train or resume motion. The station, the first launch, the second launch, the brake run, the re-entry block, and the hold block before the station allow the ride to run up to four trains total for a maximum capacity of just over 1,750 people per hour. Velocicoaster Soft opened on April 30th, 2021, receiving glowing reviews before officially opening on June 10th, 2021. The ride has certainly lived up to the hype that surrounded its development and will continue to thrill riders and sarturros for decades to come. Overall, Velocicoaster is a fantastic and clever addition serving only to add to the park's thrilling offerings. The ride shows Universal's commitment and ability to cater not just to families but thrill seekers alike, using the perfect story, franchise, and technology to provide an unmatched thrilling experience. And that's how Velocicoaster works. If you like this video, please subscribe, and if you like what we do, you can join our Patreon for early access to these videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the parks. I tell them the raptors are dangerous. They say put a roller coaster in a bag. Huh, what could go wrong?